Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors. I've come here to talk about the tandem brake master cylinder that a number of people have asked me to do a video on how do you do this? How do you get them apart? How do you put them back together? This is the dual master cylinder that was fitted on the, on the federal spec, Canadian spec, from uh, 1968 through 1974. In 75, they went to a booster, a different type of master cylinder. This is, a, the, this, is this master cylinder, and it is difficult, to say the least, to get apart. So we've got our, our nice vise here. We're going to start here, and I'll, maybe I'll start like this. We've got these four screws, and I gotta get these four screws out, so I'm gonna tip it so that you can't see it. And uh, so we're gonna take off the cap, you know, start there. The cap comes apart, we'll pop him, pop him apart like that. Here's that we'll put, put all of our junk into a into a basket. We're gonna go wash this a, after a while and get it all nice and clean. So now we gotta get the reservoir off, so we have to use a number three Phillips. We'll lean into it here. It usually comes apart. So I've got that. And uh, of course, we dropped the screw. But that's okay because I have three more to get out. I will get them out. <clears throat> okay, so you can see I'm having some difficulty here making these screws turn. This one turns okay, the other two don't. So there is a trick involved here. I'll show you the trick. And uh, all tricks involve hammers. So here's our well-balanced hammer. And I'm gonna take this and We shock the threads and we also seat the, uh, the tip into there a little more easily. We got this guy off. Oh, that was pretty easy. And we got some rubber seals here and those are just old and nasty. And we can put this guy in here, we'll wash them up later too. We got a push rod. The push rod on the MGB is shorter than the push rod on the midget. This guy is used in both the midget and the MGB. And you can see that the breather hole, see the breather hole on the on the bellows here out in front, that's at the bottom. We'll uh, take him off. Comes off pretty easily. And side here. Now we'll set this guy back into here. And I think our next step now. If you don't have the special tools, then you have to take a 3 8 fine bolt and uh, put them into each of these holes. But I happen to have my special tool, so I can uh, run both of these out. Underneath, underneath these outlets lies a one-way valve. And under the valve lies a spring. And that valve sits like this up against the inside so that once you've pushed pressure out into the system, it can't, it can't, that pressure can't be relieved unless it overcomes the spring tension. Okay? That's to keep a little bit of, of uh, pressure in the braking system. Without that, uh, you, your brake pedal ends up having to go farther down so you can put these in backwards but remember the valve goes in last so okay so we got this guy all done now i'm going to take my little special tools here which are just the same thing only that they're they already have a bolt in the end of them i'm just going to spin these guys in again i could have used just a bolt there put these guys in you'll see why i'm doing that in just a minute now we have to get the clip off the top of this. This is this can be a real, a real bugger. This is a, this is a, a circlip up here that is helical. See him here. See the clip. Okay. So anyway, that and that fits around the piston. So all that stuff goes in. Now up here at the top is a snap ring. So we're going to take our 
snap ring pliers and come down in here and see what we can do to get the snap ring out of here. There's a lot of rust here. So I don't know whether this is going to, whether we're going to have any luck here. Come out. He always comes out. The worst thing to do is to break the ears, ears off him. But fun. Oh, look at that. We broke an ear off him. So we're going to have to use, we're going to have to get a used one. But I did, I did break the ear off, so so you can see the ear, the other ear is broken off this. Bad news, but I probably have one. I know I have one, so we'll grab that. Now, underneath here lies this nylon spacer. He lies in here, and he will not come out uh, until you use air pressure on him. So we're going to take air pressure here and a rag here and we're going to put the air pressure on the front hole and nothing happens which is not surprising so now we're going to have to disturb this guy just a bit and this is the only realistic way to get this guy out is to use air pressure and he is going to take a while to get out. Well, obviously more than a little time has elapsed. I've had the opportunity to change my clothes. The sun set a couple of times. But while that was all happening, this was soaking. And I've been using, well, this is called Super Rust Penetrant, but call it PB Blaster, WD-40, Breakaway, whatever you want to call it. I've been spraying the stuff in there because the, the white plastic ring has to come out of here and you can't get it out, you can't chisel it out, you can't melt it out. If you try to heat this thing up and you get one whiff of that plastic, you are on your butt. It is a vile, disgusting, horrid, toxic smell. Anyway, with a hammer and a punch, we punch into that a little bit and, um, and we keep using air and here a couple days l literally have elapsed, but I think probably if I can get this thing in here well enough out comes the white plastic ring and closely behind comes our front seal this is the seal that doesn't allow the cylinder to leak now there's there's a seal there and underneath that is a ring sure there is well on most of them there there is it's down in here but it's uh it's pretty grody down inside here. One thing we're not going to be able to do is look down inside here with the um, with our camera. And that's going to be too bad. Um, but that's just just the way it is. Here's the ring. You can see the El Crudo on it there. You know it's pretty awful. Now down inside here is yet another ring, which is exactly the same as the first ring that we took out here which I have replaced now with a better one. So we're going to look down inside here and I've tried all different types of pliers and everything that just doesn't work. I have resorted to these two scribes. I call these in the trade, I call these dentist tools. They're not dentist tools. Any self-respecting dentist would run in horror from these things. They're nearly this, this kind of trouble doing these things, but this one's really, uh... and but this is the only way that you can do it. You just cannot, there's no pliers, there's no special tool, there's no factory tool. Look at that, out he comes. Great success, great success. Now we can pull out the whole, my gosh, this thing is just a real bugger. We've got a, a ring here. So here's the ring. So that's the way all this stuff is stacked up with that on the outside. <laughs> and our piston won't even come out because of the rust. I have some special pliers here that grip on the inside. See, they're piston ring pliers. 
<clears throat> there. Nasty, huh? Look at that. Vile and disgusting. We know what the cylinder looks like on the inside. We know it's absolutely horrid. But we're going to go over and we're going to hone it as though it were okay. So here we are, the first part, we're going to use the dingleberry brush because it looks like it's got dingleberries on it. It's properly called a glaze breaker. We're going to put this down inside the house, put some water on it to, at the same time. And uh, my, my guess is that once we get a really good view of the inside of this cylinder, we'll find that it's not repairable, but, but we're going to go through the motions here so you know how to do this. That looks okay up top. Now we're going to change, change our uh, dingleberry brush. Use a smaller one. And do the main bore. I don't know whether we'll be able to look down inside the bore or not. I can feel that the bottom, the bottom of the bore is not perfect, but sometimes it can be pretty good. Um, and and uh, I mean, it, it can be, it can have some damage to it, but still work okay. Our recirculating mineral spirits here, and uh, that's uh, to you. That's uh, Probably not the kitchen sink while your wife is out, but but uh, oh, you can use kerosene, you can use um, mineral spirits. Gasoline is the best cleaner, but there's uh, obviously at this age you're wise enough not to do this on gasoline. So here's this here's this piston, and you can see that the the piston's got little imperfections and marks and so forth all the way around it. Just little scratches. Some of the, some of them we put there, taking it apart. There's no way to avoid it. So anyway, we want to make this nice and smooth, so it doesn't leak externally. So we're going to come over here to our lathe. You could grab this with your drill and do the same thing that I'm going to do here with the lathe. Um, and we're going to find some paper here. This is 320 paper. Clean him up with 320. That's pretty good. Now we're going to go to something finer here. Let me pick out. Uh, oh, I got to have some 600 here someplace. That's 320. Here's some 600 paper. So it makes the, it makes the surface all really nice. Here's some 600 paper. Put it in. Here's some thousand. Here's some thousand paper. Okay. Thousand paper is about about as fine as uh, old-fashioned British toilet paper, which was waxed on one side and about a thousand grit on the either uh, thousand grit on the other, so you could either smear or bleed. That was my experience. Well, American toilet paper. Okay, so here we go. We are taking a look at our guy here, and we, there's um, you can see he's a lot nicer. There's one imperfection here, right there, that we can't get past. N another one here, but you know, you can't make sometimes you can't make perfect, you just do the very best you can. So, we're going to come back over here and clean the remainder of these things up a little bit. And 
and uh, we've got the reservoir here. So I'm gonna just shake this for a while. We'll we'll come we'll come back. You, you, okay. I didn't know. So now we got the stuff kind kind of clean here. I used a brush on it, and we'll get it cleaner still. But now we have our cylinder, and our cylinder here needs uh, needs some cleaning. It would be horrible to put this back in the in the car looking like this. So we've got two approaches. Come on down. F follow me down here. We have uh, our wire wheel. So we're going to clean them up on the wire wheel. We'll come back in a minute and show you how, how, how nice this looks. So you could say, well, that's about as good as I can get it. I'm going to get the front. You could say that's about as good as I can get it, um, unless of course you had a sandblaster at your house. And uh, so I'm going to go behind the curtain here for a minute in the sandblaster. I'll show you the sandblaster. I'm going to disappear here for a minute and get this guy clean. I'll be right out. So if you got a sandblaster, you can make it look like this, or even better if you spend more, more time on the sandblaster. But now, of course, it's got sand in it, so we got to get the sand out. So we're going to go back over to the sink. So here we have to use our little butt light, come down inside and take a look. And you know, there's a couple of spots in here, but it's not, uh, it's not together, not altogether horrible. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and we had a lot of rust in there. It's really hard to see down in here. This isn't going to be, oh no, I'm wrong. Oh, this is just toast inside. It is really, really horrible. Ah, awful. You got to sell the customer a new cylinder. So what can I do here? Shall I put it back together or shall I say that reassembly is simple a reversal of the procedures that we've seen? Anyway, here's the kit. You know, it's necessary to, to take each of these pieces apart, each of these guys apart, and put them, you know, put them out, lay them out, get them all laid out, know exactly what each piece is, all the springs and so forth. And um, here we got the push rod, and we got the we got the valves. Here's this guy that goes up in front of him and. One of the screws that holds the, holds the rest of this guy on. So we've got part of the cap here. I'll show you some more stuff on here, but we're not going to reassemble this. There's a washer that goes on here. There's a valve stuck down inside the spring. We can get him out in a minute. We're still going here. Here's the ring that goes out in front. Here's the screws that hold the reservoir on. Here's the master cylinder. Oh, come on, baby, I know I can do this. Here's our uh, big banjo washer that holds the rear fitting in place. And uh, here's another valve. Here's some washers here. And we get the last washer here, which begs the question, where are the two washers? There's a copper washer here, but there's no copper washer on the other side of this, 
But here's the one here, so this is the guy here. These banjo fittings have to be sandwiched with copper washers, must be. Now if you want to make this thing look kind of pretty, you can use some carburetor cleaner. I happen to have some here, I don't think I've got a lot, but let's just say that we want to make this look real pretty. And cleaning with carburetor cleaner. So there, how's that? Now you're still yellow, you know, it isn't like buying a brand new one and, and having it all, uh, all absolutely bone white. Um, of course I don't have a little brush here, but uh, you can take the carburetor cleaner, you can spray it into here. And if you work this with a little brush, you can get this really, really nice and clean. Get him all nice and clean on the underside. And with a little nylon brush, you can get him all nice and looking really, really sharp, you know, because when you've got spent all, all the time to uh, re rebuild this, I mean, you don't want it just to work. You want it to look good, too. You can scrub away at this thing. You can get off all the little dirt. And this is just fun, you know. I mean, what's, what are you doing this stuff for anyway? I mean, you could just bring the car to me, write me a check, pull out your card, charge card, and I'd fix this stuff for you. Wouldn't Maybe it wouldn't look quite as good as this. This is almost uh, restoration here. But the reason that you do this stuff is because you like it. If you like it, you want to do a good job. You want to do a clean job. So, so here we go. It's almost done here. There's no end to what you can do. Gosh, you meet, meet people and they go, oh yeah, well, I, you know, I hooked this thing up and I got this special cleaner and yada, yada, yada. Here's the cap. Is he perfect? No. Does he look a lot better than he did? Absolutely. You know, so anyway, when we go to reassemble this guy, you need some device, some device, uh, not unlike what I've made here, so that when you slip the new seals from your kit, when you slip the new seals onto the, onto the piston, you can get it reassembled. Remember that this guy goes together like this goes up through here and the pin that pin goes through at the end so you've got this seal pointing towards the rear here you got this seal pointing towards the front here and you got another primary seal pointed towards the rear here this is the rear circuit this is the front circuit okay. So reassembly is, is uh, just like I showed you but make sure that you use a lot of this so uh, we Buy this stuff, I swear by the gallon. It's uh, Napa Sil Glide for reassembling uh, all of our brake stuff. Oh my gosh, this stuff is absolutely tremendous. And uh, you know, you coat it on everything, get it down inside there, and it makes it steel, I mean, it makes it slide so wonderfully, and it makes it last a long, long time. So, this is the 1968 through 1974 tandem brake master cylinder used on the MGB or used from 68 through 79 on the MG Midget. Um, so it, it's, uh, it's an interesting interesting piece of equipment and it's this, this guy, this guy, as you stack them up because once you drop this piston back down in, this guy goes on top of him right and then this goes in that's the bugger he's the bugger then there's a ring to protect this seal which you put in like that and then this guy goes on top and funny this guy goes in on top of that and oh my gosh it'll work just great but this thing has pits and craters in it like the moon and it would be folly and a waste of the kit to to do this so you can do it at home i've shown you some of the tricks let me just see if I so Dayton's done double duty and read this while we were off camera for, for a minute and this is a really nice little punch because you can't see it here but it's got a little tiny tit here on the top to center it it's 5 ths that's what size this pin is 5 ths you need a you need a punch that size this is not not for the faint hearted 
or those who are, are not skilled with small tools. This is a real, a real project, Safety Fast.